Hi, Russell Cummings here. Just wanted to talk to you very quickly about a 90-day contact program. This is probably one of the most important things that you can do in your business. And my experience is that organizations and businesses that roll out an effective 90-day contact program are far more um, likely to grow and prosper than those that don't. Um, in my experience, it's one of the few things you must do. And what's based on is ensuring that you systematically contact everybody in your database every 90 days. And what this does is re-imprint your business back on their mind again so that they're constantly getting, you know, Business X, or in my case, Russell Cummings, Russell Cummings re-imprinted re on their brains because their brain's clear after every 90 days. And I've actually proved this uh, in business a number of times. So got to develop a 90-day contact program. It's really quite simple. Look at the instructions. But very quickly, the first thing we need to do is group our clients and categorize them. So we need to look at our customers. You might have one or two groups of customers you want to look at, and you might want to break them down into different categories. And the reason why you want to break them into different categories is because not all clients are equal. So, And it's not just about the amount of uh, fees or sales that they do with you. There may be some other factors. So let's look at what those factors could be. So this is a, a client methodology um, from uh, a long-term client. And what we looked at was saying, okay, what are the factors we're going to look at? And we looked at, at seven factors here in terms of deciding whether they're an A-class client for us or a B-class or a C-class client. And so what we said was the factors we looked at were size, what's the volume of their current work over the last two years, how accessible are they, so where are they located, what's the potential for their fees going forward, what's the quality of their relationship with us, how frequently do they pay us, are they good payers or not, and how clear they understand our services and what they might be. Now you might use this as a basis and modify it depending for your business. Then we already looked at a weighting for each of those factors and said, right, out of 100, how many points would we give to them? And we actually gave more points to potential fees than current fees. Um, and then some of the other factors were in, were in there as well. We then came up with the rules around scoring. And then we simply dumped our database out to a spreadsheet and score them against all these factors to come up with um, a ranking. We ranked all our clients and then we divided them up based on those rankings into sort of three areas, A, B, C class clients. So you don't have to have seven factors. You might have three factors. You might have two factors. You could have five factors. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you take the time to clarify what does a good client look for you. So think about your good clients, the, the customers that you like working with and that are great to work with, and then think about, okay, what are we going to do to grade them? All right, so that's step one, grade your customers. Once we've done that, then we can build them into a contact plan. So what we've got here is across the top, we've set our customers, and we've also included prospects and other, and other groups in these um, things here. So for this particular example, we've got existing, commercial, uh, existing customers, which are all commercial business customers, A, B, and C. We've then broken our prospects off into commercial prospects, so they're either hot prospects and or just normal prospects. We've also looked at government as a client group and whether the prospects are hot or not. We then said, well, we want to stay in touch with our suppliers and we should also stay in touch with centers of influence. And centers of influence are people who are more likely to send you and refer you more work than they are to be a client. So depending on your industry, they could be accountants or lawyers or manufacturers or you know other people. They could even be suppliers, I suppose, for some of you. So you put those across the top, and then down the side, you list the potential contact activities. Now, that we've put some of the main ones here. A newsletter, so a newsletter, electronic or paper, is a good basis for making sure you get that minimum 90-day contact. We then said you could also have uh, do phone calls, so give them a call on a regular basis. We could visit them on site. We could give them gifts, and maybe we could send them a Christmas card. But you may also like to bite them to events. You might take them to the footy or the cricket or something or the opera, whatever suits you uh, and the client. And you may also have special internal events, drinks, nights or lunches or something that you want to invite them to. It's then about thinking, well, about the events and the gifts and the Christmas cards. Who do we want to invite to these things? So who will we invite? 
and then uh, and you might only invite say selected c-class clients to a thing or in this case with gifts we said we'd only give selected clients that's what the s stands for in the key so we give um, s uh, selected supplies and selected centers of influence a gift we've then said everybody gets the the newsletter quarterly although centers of influence we mainly send them every second one um, i'm not sure why we decided that phone calls we looked and said our A class clients we're going to call them monthly just a quick catch up call how are you how are you going is there anything we can do for you our B class clients we're going to catch up with them six monthly and our A class clients get one call a year from us and we move across the table in terms of visits we said we're going to have an on site visit with our A class clients once a quarter our B class clients once every uh, once a year and then our uh, C class customers don't get a visit at all but we're going to visit our hot prospects at least twice a year yeah will only visit selected suppliers. So you can see you build up a, a table for how you're going to address this. Once you've done that, then you need to make this into a system. And this is the where the real power is. So you need to use tools like CRMs and Outlook and task managers, those sort of things to plug all these things in and set them up. So it says, you do to call such and such a client this date, it pops up with a message and says, call Frank, refollow up call. Uh, that sort of stuff call so-and-so to to make a visit so you want to put these things think about how you're going to do them put them into outlook and some of these other great tools you've got around that can help you to to control your time and manage your time because the key is you need to keep managing and marketing and doing all these things when you're at your most busy all right to avoid feast and famine so contact program is all about maintaining systematic contact with multiple people it's also about grading or graduating the level of contact you have with different people because not all people are created equal all right in a nutshell it's a 90 day contact program one of the most critical things you need to do in your business and um, i'll leave it there thank you